Welcome to St. Aloysius Church. In the early 1530s, there were two young students sitting in a garret in Paris. They were students at the University of Paris. One was named Pierre. He came from the Savoy area, which is the borderlands between Switzerland and Italy and France. And he was as poor as a church mouse. But thanks to people in the little village where he came from, they got together to be able to send him to university. His companion, also in his early 20s, was a man called Francisco. He was also a student. They were both of them moving to the end of their degrees, moving into doing masters, actually, at the University of Paris. Um, but as I say, Pierre was very poor, and Francisco was minor nobility from the northern parts of Spain, and as with many minor nobility, perpetually short of cash. So they decided that they couldn't really afford to continue as they were going. The only way that they could make any money was by getting somebody in to share their room with them, which was quite small anyway. But they managed to get another bed in with the idea that they would share the rent of this garret. Pierre, who was always a very sensitive, thoughtful person, uh, had made friends with an older Spaniard. This guy was in his late 30s, and Pierre thought, well, this is a good thing because he comes from the same kind of area as northern Spain as Francisco. And what Pierre had been doing is he'd been teaching this other man, Inigo by name, uh, he'd been teaching him logic and other things because although he was an older man, he came into education quite late. And Pierre was quite struck with this older man. He had a serenity about him. He had an ability to, to see things of the soul. And so they used to engage in conversation. So while Pierre taught him logic, Inigo taught the other man to pray. Pierre suggested to Francisco that Inigo should come and join them in that, take that third bed, and he also would be able to share in the rent. And in one way, in theory, it was fine. But as soon as Francisco found that Inigo came from a part of the Basque country that his brothers had been at war with, he immediately became far more sniffy. And so what we found was that these three gathered in the room, but Francisco used to cold shoulder the third person, Inigo. Inigo didn't mind. He was charming and friendly and helpful and actually still used to try to get students to come to be tutored by Francisco, uh, although Francisco didn't know that. It was the conversations really between Pierre and Inigo that used to eventually entice Francisco into a discussion. Francisco was quite different from Pierre. He was um, wanting adventure. He was an extrovert. He was the high jump champion of the University of Paris. He was quite an athlete, but his resources were limited, so he wasn't able to advance terribly much. And he used to listen silently as the other two discussed, and eventually started to get drawn into the discussions, drawn into discussions about human life and who they were and where they were going for. And Francisco was fascinated because, although he didn't show it at first, that Inigo, who had been the soldier, had changed his direction. It's the story of three saints. Francis Xavier, Francisco, Ignatius of Loyola, and Pierre Favre. Pierre was canonized only a few years ago, but it was these three that became the central part of what became known as the Society of Jesus, with Ignatius as the inspiring founder. Let's have a little piece of scripture, which was an inspiration and really changed the heart of the direction of the life of Francisco. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 34 to 37. Jesus called the crowd and his disciples and said to them, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save their life will lose it. And the one who loses their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit someone to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, 
what can they give in return for their life? The three men in the garret changed the world. Pierre Favre, the sensitive and at times scrupulous person, was drawn out by Inigo. He became what was known by his contemporaries, the quiet companion, a man who had a gift for friendship in a time of trouble, in a time of conflict, in a time of extremes. He tried always to be a diplomatic presence, seeing the good in all other human beings, trying not to be caught up with the extremism that was there in the Europe of his time. He died quite young, traveling across European cities from city to city, always seeking to try to reconcile what was then the fight between the Protestants and the Catholics. Francisco, Francis Xavier, was a different character and the glory that he sought in life, Ignatius changed. Inigo talked to him and saw that the great glory was, he was seeking could be found in a far better way. And Francis found his way across the world, preaching the good news first in India, then into the Pacific, to Japan, and eventually dying in his mid-40s on the coasts of China seeking to get into China to preach the good news of Jesus Christ to the Chinese. The starting of this journey for both of them was Inigo, Ignatius of Loyola, and it is on his feast day that I am speaking to you today. The Ignatius Chapel over my shoulder is decorated and the candles are lit because the gift and the genius of Ignatius of Loyola was the recognition and it was the experience that he himself had, the uniqueness of the call of God to every human heart. Nobody is exempt, no matter how old or how young, no matter what color of the skin, what faith we have, the Spirit of God speaks deeply to every human heart. And he did that, he unlocked that for Pierre. He unlocked that for Francisco. And as we gather on this feast today, it's important for, for us to remember that insight that Ignatius gives. It's the discernment. It's the understanding that within the complexities of every human heart, within all of the passions and the desires, the fears and the negativities that are there, the whispering voice of the Spirit of God is calling to us. Uniquely, not in general, uniquely. Ignatius unlocked that for those two guys and then for the first companions of the Society of Jesus. His hope, would he be with us today, would be to do exactly the same thing. Each of us to recognize that each of us is called. Life is important. Life is rich and to be lived. And the guide to how to do that with true integrity, with true depth of consolation, is by trying to hear the calling of God to me. And in doing that, it will allow me to live my life with tremendous power and understanding and love. On this feast day, let us pray, each of us, for that grace.